Hey folks, yeah, I've got the Hornby catalogue. Um, this is the first Hornby catalogue I've bought since 1978. Um, yeah, they've, they've changed a bit since those days. Um, I thought it'd be fun just to, to go over a few things in this. Um, you know, when I was a little boy, I would go through the Hornby catalogue and circle the things that I wanted the most, uh, kind of hoping that my, my dad would look through the catalogue and get them for my Christmas or something, you know. Um, so I thought it'd be fun just to kind of do the same thing with this. Not actually circle things, but just to point out the things that uh, have caught my eye and you know things that I would really like to get a hold of. Um, so yeah, let's have a look. So first of all, on page twenty-two. Uh, this is not something I'm remotely interested in getting, but I just wanted to comment on it. Uh, the Beatles. Um, what the heck? I, sorry, Hornby. No idea what you're playing at here. <laughs> if, Please somebody explain to me why Hornby are doing a, a range of, of uh, stock with a Beatles theme. I don't get that at all. So on page 27, there is the R30172, which is a class 101 DMU in Strathclyde region livery. Um, I really like my DMUs. I've already got a class 101. I've got the Lima one in ScotRail livery. Um, but it'd be really nice, really nice to have a, a Strathclyde region one like this because uh, it's, it's just such a nice looking livery I think. Um, this is coming out in the second quarter apparently this year and it, uh, it's coming at a price of about £135 which isn't too bad I don't think. So that's yeah I think this is something I might keep my eye out for whether I buy it brand new or just keep my eye open for a used one coming about you know com becoming available at some point I'll wait and see but it's certainly something I would like to get hold of at some point. On page 46, we've got the R30234 Chang Railways Caledonian Single Pack. Um, I must say, I've got a wee bit of an issue with these revisits to Chang and Dublo that Hornby are, are doing. Um, but more than that in a minute. Uh, you know, I just wish they'd revamp this locomotive properly, but as far as I can see, uh, it, you know, it's either a re release of, of the actual Chang model or the later one that they did uh, with traction tyres. Um, I mean, both are flawed designs. Um, you know, and apparently they've refined the detail on this, but you know, so what? Do, does it actually run properly? Um, you know, I'd still be interested in this though. It's one hundred and forty nine ninety nine, which isn't too bad a price actually. Um, I think you actually get three coaches with this, but you know, I think it's just going to be the same old model, and it won't run particularly well. It looks as if it's going to have the plastic tender wheels, poor pickup probably still be badly balanced, um, which is a shame, you know, I think there's a, a missed opportunity here, um, and I really hope that one day somebody makes a nice running version of this particular locomotive. Um, you know, it's crying out to be tender driven, that way you would sort the balance and pick up issues and the traction issues that it has. Um, this would really work extremely well as a tender driven model. On page 57 we've got the R3965 LNER Class 801 of week 2. Um, you know, the Class 800 is a train I see running regularly on the, uh, the East Coast Main Line near me. Uh, and, you know, I would love to have locomotives on my layout that I see in real life. You know, it's all fine and well running steam trains and old locomotives. And, you know, um, you know when I was a kid, I always wanted toys and models of what I saw in reality. And uh, I always favoured Corgi and Matchbox cars of, of ordinary cars over any fancy sporty things or fantasy things off the telly. Um, and it was the same with airfix kits. I always liked building civilian aircraft or contemporary ones uh, over things from, from the two world wars. Um, and it's kind of the same with trains. You know, when I was young, you know, I really wanted the trains that I saw, you know, when I was in the car with my parents. You would see class 37s, 47s, uh, the odd Deltic. Um, so those were the ones that I wanted. And it's why I really liked getting the class 37 for my my, my layout back in the 70s and uh, I guess I'm still kind of like that you know I'd still like to model what I see um, so I'd love one of these because you know as I say this is what I see there's another um, DMU that I see but I, I couldn't tell you what class it is I don't know but uh, th this is the one I see most often belting down the east coast main line and uh, yeah I'd, I'd love to have this on my layout uh, however this thing costs a whopping 500 quid um, I think it's exactly £502.49 as it's list, pr list price and I really don't see me buying this at that price or any, or any other model at, at that price. 
Um, I know you can pick up Class 800s on eBay for maybe about £100 less than that. But, uh, yeah, you know, unless I can get one of these really cheap one day, um, I don't see me ever, ever having one. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's overpriced. You know, £500 is a lot of money for, for any model. But, you know, there's clearly a lot gone into these. It's a five-car set. So, you know, it's going to cost a lot of money. But, yeah, 500 quid is just a bit steep. On page 65, we've got the R3859 J36 in L and R green with BR lettering. And this is coming out in the third quarter. Uh, I already have two Hornby J36s. I've got Haig and Maud. And uh, I would still like to get the, the LNER one as well. Um, but when I saw this, you know, I immediately looked up the price and if I could pre-order. Um, it's listed at £164.99 and it'll be limited to 1,000 models. Uh, I haven't pre-ordered it yet, but I think I'm probably going to. Um, I just love the look of this thing. I really like the J36. Um, you know, again, you know, there's that local connection. It's what the steam train that would have ran on my local branch line. So... That makes me interested in it. Um, and it, it's, it's a lovely little engine. And certainly Maud and Haig, uh, Hornby did an absolute cracking job with those, I think. They're, they're fantastic little models. Um, if this is of the same quality and it uh, looks as good as I think it might, um, yeah, this is something that I would definitely want and probably want enough to buy it. Um, so I think this is... Uh, of everything in this catalogue, this is the most likely thing I'm going to buy. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll be getting my pre-order in soon for this. On page 91, there's the R30211 double O BR Flying Scotsman from Era 11. Um, I, you know, I can't help feel that this whole double O um, thing that Hornby are doing is a little bit of... Uh, it's a bit sneaky, you know, it's, it's going to be enticing collectors to stump up big cash, I think. And uh, the cynic in me, you know, thinks marketing these things as double models is a little bit disingenuous. Um, you know, just because it's going to have a, a metal body doesn't make it a double O. Um, you know, a double O was a whole make, it was Hornby double O. Um, you know, I mean, I'm sure these will be lovely models and, you know, I would love to have this particular version of the Flying Scotsman. Um, I really couldn't give a stuff what sort of box it comes in and, you know, that doesn't matter to me whatsoever. What matters is, you know, whether it's of the quality and running performance that justifies the £362.99 price tag. Um, if it does, then I don't think that's necessarily too expensive, to be honest. But it's not a double O to me. Um, it's a modern model with all the DCC gubbins and fiddly faffery daffery that comes with it. Um, which is fine, you know, and I applaud Hornby for, for striving to make something of quality and to produce models that will probably appreciate in value, um, you know, but I just find it a bit sad that, you know, probably quite a few of these will probably never leave their box. People will buy them and just keep them in their collection and they'll never get used, which I think is a shame. Um, but, you know, I don't know, I can't help feel a little bit uncomfortable with all double boxing and branding. It's, uh, some things are best left in the past where they belong. It's, uh, it's an interesting question to, to you guys, though. You know, would you pay the same price for one of these models if it was branded differently? You know, does that uh, Horby Double O box and branding justify paying a lot more money? Um, you know, uh, <laughs> to me it doesn't. To me it's about the, the quality of the actual model, not the box. So I really hope these are really good and I would love to have this Flying Scotsman. But, yeah, I can't help feeling a wee bit uncomfortable with the whole Hornby double thing. On page 182, there's the R7292. This is the HM6000 app-based analogue control. Um, I think this is an interesting option for controlling a DC layout. It uh, works via Bluetooth from an app on, on your phone or a tablet. Um, and watching demos of this, you know, it looks as if it works absolutely fine. Um, and I'd be quite interested to try one. And I was actually thinking of getting one to try in the new layout, but having thought about it a bit more, you know, personally, I like buttons and knobs. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of touchscreen controls, really. Um, you know, I find the tactile nature of, of physical buttons and knobs much, much better because 
you know, you can operate them without looking at them, which I think is hugely, hugely important. Um, how they allow touchscreen controls in cars, I don't know, because you've got to take your eyes off the road to operate them. It just seems nuts to me. So, you know, I think this isn't a bad idea, especially for a small layout. You know, it's if, if you're setting up your first layout and buying your first controller, this is actually quite a cheap controller to get, and it'll do, you know, quite a lot for your money. But, you know, I don't think it's for me. Uh, you know, the, the HM6010, or 6010, for operating accessories, uh, only does four accessories at a time. Um, and you can only have three HM6010s working with a HM6000. So that limits the number of accessories you can operate through this system to 12. Uh, that's, you know, that's not enough for me. Interesting though, and uh, I'd like to see Hornby develop this idea further. Um, you know, it's good to have some evolution in the DC space, but, you know, I think Hornby are onto, are onto something with this, but I think it needs to be a bit snazzier and have a lot more uh, scope uh, with regard to functionality. On page 218, there's a promotion for Hornby TT120. Uh, I'd expected to see a lot more about TT in this catalogue, but I'm guessing there'll be a separate catalogue for that, probably. Maybe. Don't know. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what to make of TT120. Um, I will say, I think I'm on the sceptical side of that particular fence, and uh, you know, I'll be surprised if this is the success that Hornby hopes it will be. I hope it is. Um, you know, I don't want Hornby to feel like anything, but you know, I think we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I do like the idea of smaller scale stuff, and I've always pondered over the, the idea of setting up something in Engage. But for me, the, the lack of stock, especially used stock in TT, you know, is, is a huge barrier. Um, but I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for it. I really do hope it's a, it's a success, um, but I can't help think, oh, Hornby, that's a big gamble. But we shall see. So there we are, those were the things that interested me the most looking through this catalogue. Um, obviously, you know, everything interests me and there's, there's stuff here that I'd love to get, but I can't go over it all and you can't have everything. So, yeah, those were the things that were the, the high points for me. Um, a few people have asked, actually quite a lot of people have asked about when I'm going to start demolishing the layout and, build, and building the new one. Um, probably fairly soon, I've actually started clearing up underneath the layout and boxing up some, some of the, the rubbish that's lying about in the room, so preparations have started. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big undertaking, so, you know, probably sometime in February, maybe, it might actually have to wait till March, um, but as soon as I, you know, start on it properly, I will let you know, and I will be making some videos on it, so, you know, don't worry, you'll know when it starts. Uh, one other thing I want to say is that Model Rail Scotland is coming soon to the SEC in Glasgow. Um, I plan to be there on Sunday the 26th of February. Now, it may be Saturday the 25th, just have to wait and see, but I would prefer to go on the Sunday. Um, and it's, it'll also be weather dependent, you know, there's some weather forecast saying we're going to be getting snow and all sorts uh, towards the end of February. So. We'll need to see because it means me driving along the M8 and back and uh, anyone who's driven the M8 and back in winter time will tell you it's it's not fun if it's uh, snowing badly so um, we shall see you know to me it's not worth risking life and limb to go to a model railway exhibition but I do really want to go and I do plan to be there um, so I'll let you know near the time for definite okay folks right I'll catch you later